Skimming all the ATMs, Internet of Things, we have problems, and wearable Internet of Things probably worse than, hey, thumb drives, they have so much potential. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Patrick Norton, and this is ThreatWire for May 2nd, 2016, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Thanks to everybody that supports us on patreon.com slash threatwire. You keep the show coming commercial-free every week. Oh my goodness, people watch out. Skimming attacks where a hacked automated teller machine or cash machine harvest card information every time it's used are at an all-time high, as in up 5 hundred and forty six percent between 2014 and 2015 quote the number of ATM compromises in 2015 was the highest ever recorded by the FICO card alert service which monitors hundreds of thousands of ATMs in the US criminal activity was highest at non-bank ATMs such as those in convenience stores where 10 times as many machines were compromised as in 2014 now we found the news at Krebs on security who also links a story he ran earlier this year Krebs did about uh, cameras and quote skimming devices plugged into ATM network cables way more difficult to detect than the old school gadget double stick tape to the front of the machine. Me, I still basically walk up to an ATM and grab the place where the card goes in, yank it up and down, I try to pry the keyboard off. Krebs pretty much says to avoid the ATMs in 7-Eleven convenience stores, quote, I've heard from multiple banking industry sources who say they have seen a spike in ATM fraud targeting cash machines in 7-Elevens and other convenience stores, and that the commonality among the machines is that they are all operated by ATM giant Cardtronics. Apparently, machines in 7-Eleven locations made up for 17.75% of Cardtronics revenue last year. So, what do you do? Well, hey, remember, cover your ham when you're entering your PIN number. The card data ain't so useful without a PIN number, and little tiny cameras aimed at the keyboard are hard to detect. So put your hand over the keyboard to prevent people from figuring out what your PIN is. And seriously, you might want to stick to using only ATMs attached to banks. And one last time, cover the hand. Our Internet of Things developer is aware that their industry is considered a giant security hole in the making? I think the answer is yes. Check out Evans Data Corporation's latest survey of 500 plus IoT devs. Uh, Evans Data, they drop eight reports a year on quote, overall global IoT trends, IoT and mobility, IoT in the cloud, and IoT and big data. Their latest IoT survey found that quote, 31% of developers active in the IoT space believe that the greatest trouble spot for IoT security lies within the software or firmware for their connected devices, which makes sense because all too often somebody's building an internet connected whatever and they just grab some hardware, some firmware comes with the hardware, they slap it together, they probably don't do any significant security testing and off to market it goes. We've seen this in other places like <coughs> routers. 22% of those developers surveyed were concerned about exposing data to mobile clients, while just under 17% had concerns about the transmission of data through a network or cloud, which suggests they know about things like, oh, I don't know, HTTPS, VPN, or other internet security stuff. Most, basically nobody really had that many concerns about the physical security of devices, which makes sense if the IoT device is, you know, locked inside somebody's house. I just wish that more than 55% of the developers surveyed thought that security was extremely important to their organizations. Half, roughly half, thought that security was extremely important to their organizations. 32% said it is, quote, somewhat important. I'd really like to see like 100% saying it's incredibly important. I mean, please. While I'm on an Internet of Things FUD survey roll, let's talk about Spiceworks' latest survey of IT pros and Internet of Things devices and, quote, how seriously they consider the threat. Pretty seriously, in fact. They found that, quote, the presence of wearables in the workplace has nearly doubled and they're expected to be the top source of security breaches among Internet of Things devices. The top concern expressed by IT pros, 84% was over the fact that IoT devices create more entry points into the network. Spiceworks noted that, quote, about three quarters of IT pros are also worried that Internet of Things manufacturers aren't implementing sufficient security measures. See story above. The survey included 440 IT pros in North America, Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. And seriously, IoT security is going to be a growth industry for a while. Take note if you're in college or looking for a new career path. Got a great link from the Sophos Naked Security blog. Almost half of dropped USB sticks will get plugged in. So says a study run by researchers at the University of Illinois, who sprinkled 297 drives around the campus and quote, the first drive phone home to the researchers in less than six minutes after it was placed. Yes! So yeah, one, don't plug in strange uh, USB drives. 
Two, encrypt your drives in case you lose them, because somebody might plug them in. And three, pen testers, you know what to do with this information. <laughs> Couple more things before I go. Threat post scourge of Android overlay malware on the rise says to watch out for overlay malware. Basically, it sits on top of legit apps, making it easier to steal your login info for, say, um, your bank. Flashpoint Intel looks at the hacking for ISIS, the emergency cyber threat landscape. That big, dense, uh, well, report basically says pro-ISIS hacking groups are growing. They're merging, but they aren't particularly skilled yet, in no small part, because ISIS doesn't have an official hacktivist arm. So while pro-ISIS attacks aren't sophisticated right now, they have the potential to seriously suck in the future. And uh, one last thing, tell your dentist not to use the flash drive the American Dental Association sent out, the one that says CDT 2015 Dental Procedural Codes. It's got malware on it. Another tip of the hat to Krebs for that one. Thanks to everyone who supported the show so far on Patreon. You are keeping the show completely independent and ad-free. If you can't donate, a like, a share, or a subscribe go a very long way too. But seriously, if you find value from ThreatWire and can spare a few cents an episode, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash threatwire. We may even feature your adorable fur babies like these in the next episode. And feel free to send pictures of your favorite Ethernet port too. You can find all our episodes, links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. And with that, I'm Patrick Norton. I'll see you on the internet, and I'll be avoiding the ATM at 7-Eleven. Cover. Cover the hand, people. Cover the hand.